so that lord uh, we may apply the things that you teach us uh, for the glory of your name and grant us the grace lord that we might be able to live in obedience to you thank you jesus for hearing our prayers for we offer it in the sweet and loving name of our lord and savior jesus christ amen okay the target for today is very stiff especially because you have to do it in two languages okay so that will give only 15 minutes so you will have to listen to 15 minutes short talk okay uh anyway we will just get an introduction to the book of uh luke we have seen many uh, times earlier not that luke wrote many unique things in his book okay and uh, just let me get the page here yeah so just want uh, each one of us uh, to turn in our bibles to luke chapter 10 and verse 25 There are many unique things. काफी सारा चीज ऐसा है जो लूक के पुस्तक में है जो और किसी गॉस्पल में नहीं है तो दिस पैराबल ऑफ द गुड समेरिटन इज ऑल्सो देयर इन द बुक ऑफ लूक इट इज नॉट देयर एल्स वेर ओके वॉट इज स्पेशल अबाउट दिस स्टोरी यू नो आई इलस्ट्रेट बाय टेलिंग अ पोएम which you learnt in your nursery okay you heard that poem pussy cat pussy cat where have you been what does pussy cat tell i have been to london to see the queen then what is the question that is asked pussy cat pussy cat what did you see so what is the answer pussy cat gives Only. Ah, that is frightening. Is that ah frightened a little mouse under her chair? Okay, I saw a mouse under her chair. So pussy cat went all the way to London to the palace to see the queen. But what she saw? She saw the mouse under the chair. Didn't see the one who was sitting on the chair. Saw the one who was under the chair. And what did she do? She frightened that mouse because that was there in her blood. Okay. She saw what she wanted. She did she what she liked. Right? Yeah. So when you take the Bible and read, we are like that pussy cat. We will see. only what we want to see we will hear only what we want to hear we will do only what we want to do but we will all hold the same book you know most of the time throughout our life we are like that pussy cat seeing hearing understanding and doing only what we one they are not seeing what should be really seen in that place okay so the book of luke is also like that the events that took place at the time of jesus were also like that okay many things took place each author of the gospel he saw some things as necessary he put it so luke also wrote some things which he thought was necessary okay and when we read it we also apply only what we think we should apply how do we know this book was written by luke can anyone tell luke ne likha karke kaisa malu are ek mahina ho gaya pad pad ke abhi aur ek mahina aur ek hafta bhi ho gaya acts 1 padho neither luke nor acts tells who's the author 
there is no claim being made by the one who wrote it that it is Luke. Okay, it is early church tradition that attributed this book and the book of Acts to Luke because of certain features that you can see inside it. But there is no claim by the author. You know, he doesn't tell that I wrote it, Perge. Okay. So we should know that. To whom it is written? It is written to Theophilus. Theo means God. Philus means life. God lover. Okay. When you read Luke, it is obvious when that passage which uh, brother talked about, uh, Acts chapter 1, you will find that it is the second book that the author wrote. Okay. So the first book is Luke. So Luke was written before the book of Acts. Okay. So in the first book, Theophilus is referred to as most excellent Theophilus. And in the book of Acts, he is referred to as only Theophilus. Okay. Most excellent Theophilus is a title. You know, normally a Christian would not use titles that show them as elevated. You get what I'm saying? It, these were titles which the Romans used. You know? Even today, judges are referred to as your lordship. You know, it's not a title that a Christian uses. You know, we don't refer to anyone as Lord. We do not like to be called reverend. And though there are many denominations where that becomes a title. Okay? And many things like that. So one possibility that people say is that Theophilus was a Roman official who became a believer. Okay? Most excellent may have been a way of addressing that person in that rank. And then by the time it was Acts, either he was not in that official duty or he had left that official duty after he became a believer and convinced of things. Many Jews, many people who became Christians in the early church left their jobs. I'm not telling we should leave our jobs, but they left their jobs which were uncomfortable to them. Okay, which created problem and conflict with their worship of the one true God, okay? And uh, they struggled, they struggled with finances, they did other menial jobs so that they would not have to do the jobs which were coming in conflict with their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? So think about it, what kind of jobs we have, what kind of titles do people call us with, okay? Does it make us comfortable or uncomfortable? We need to think about it. When was it written? Okay, all the four Gospels and probably the book of Acts were all written before Paul's death in AD 64. Okay, though there are many authors who give various dates even going up to AD 90. Okay, this is my personal conviction, okay, which I'm telling. Because each of these books have got internal evidence. Okay, like for instance, John, which is the last of the Gospels that was written, talks about there was in, there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool called Bethesda in Aramaic which has five covered colonnades. John 5.2. Okay, there is. Okay, AD 70, Jerusalem was destroyed. Temple was burned. Nothing was left. So it could not have been written after AD 70. Okay. So in the same way, all these books, you will find a lot of strong internal evidence to indicate that they were all written before Paul's death. In fact, Acts ends with Paul in Rome. He was first in house arrest. Then he was two years free. He rented his own house but stayed there. Soon after that, you know, it was Nero who was reigning then. He was a good guy till then. Okay, then somewhere around AD 63, he started getting, giving trouble for everyone. And, uh, you know, he changed. 
and uh, history changed after that. He burnt Rome. He blamed the Christians. Persecution broke out, and then everything was different, including Peter and uh, uh, John. All major apostles were martyred at that time. Okay. What is the source of what Luke used? We can find out in Luke chapter one. Okay, just as they were handed, many have undertaken to draw up an account of the things that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed to us by those from the first who were eyewitnesses and servants of the word. Okay. Eyewitnesses and servants. Okay, the word, the Greek word that is used there uh, for uh, servants is supereto. Okay, which is also the word that Paul used for, uh, or rather Luke uses for describing John Mark in the book of uh, Acts in thirteen five. Okay, he refers to him as a servant, a helper. of the team okay so many suppose that mark who was a traveling companion sometimes with uh, paul and uh, barnabas and uh, they met often even with luke okay could have contributed a lot towards it okay he might have been one of the servants of god who contributed a lot to his work okay Luke's favorite word when he describes Jesus Christ is "son of man." Okay, he describes Jesus as "son of man." Matthew describes him as a king, the rightful person to sit on David's throne. Okay, Mark talks of him as a servant, and John looks at his divinity, the divine becoming flesh. okay here luke refers to him as son of man and that's the title that he uses very often if you want to see something which you can call as a key verse for the book of luke it is in luke chapter 19 verse 10 you should know this by memory what is that verse yeah are uh, to seek and to save the son of man has come to seek and to save the lost okay so the entire book of luke is written to demonstrate that jesus whom he refers to as son of man okay he came there was a purpose for his coming he didn't just come like any other gods of the earth he came to seek and to save that which was Lost. Okay, I'm sorry. I'll not be able to translate because we have very little time. So you'll have to try to understand. I'll try to use as simple words as possible. <laughs> Colossians. Uh, we can know a little bit about Luke from what is described of him in the New Testament. In Colossians four fourteen, he is referred to by Paul as the beloved physician. Okay, many doctors we don't like when we see them. Okay, they don't look pleasant, they don't talk pleasant, their behavior is not pleasant. They are money minded, but Paul could refer to Luke as the beloved physician. He was loved by people. because of his nature okay and his nature is written in the entire book you can whatever chapter you read you will find luke's imprint in that okay he was a gentile hmm. colossians 4:11 you know three verses before that paul is describing his traveling companions and he names only justus and john mark as jewish coworkers so the rest who are mentioned in the team that is tychicus epaphras luke demas and aristarchus they are all gentile 
Okay, only two in his team were Jews. The rest were Gentile. So Luke was also a Gentile. Okay, Eusebius, who is a writer from those olden times. Okay, he refers to Luke as someone who was born in Syrian Antioch. That day, Brother Elongovan was telling me it was recently discovered there are two Antiochs. Okay, so this is one of those Antiochs, Syrian Antioch. Okay, not the other Antioch which was in Asia Minor. Okay, this was the Antioch which was in Syria. He was born there and he was a trained doctor by profession. He joined Paul in two of his missionary journeys. Somewhere midway he joined in the second missionary journey and he was also there. And then he was left uh, 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 in Philippi by Paul when he had to leave the city in a hurry. Okay. Then in the next missionary journey, in the third missionary journey, Luke joined Paul from that area. Okay, so till then Luke remained uh, doing the extending the work that Paul had started in Philippi and in those places. In Acts chapter twenty-seven, you will find vivid descriptions of his journey and travel. Okay, so Luke was a traveler. He loved to travel. He was a doctor, but he was not an office guy. He loved to travel. He traveled with Paul and he described his travels very beautifully. The storms, the ship breaking up. You know, you can almost feel as if you are on the ship when you read what Luke is writing. Okay, He describes it with feelings and passion and he describes the scene around him so vividly. Okay, So he loved what he, what he was going through and uh, yeah, he was part of everything. It is the largest of the four Gospels. Okay, it is the largest. Char Gospel accounts hai, usme sabse bada Luke ka account is there. Okay. One of the purposes for which Luke is writing his Gospel account, already Matthew's Gospel was there. It came in around AD 41, little after the time of our Lord's death. And another decade later, by 50 AD, Mark's Gospel was also there. Okay, but the gospel was now moving worldwide, okay, along with Paul and his team. It was breaching all other corners. Matthew and Mark's gospel account helped the people in Palestine to understand who the Savior was, you know, who Jesus was. Now when it started breaching the world and reaching to other corners of the world, the gospel had to be rewritten. So that they will understand, the people who had no idea of the Jewish Messiah would be able to understand. Okay. So you will find Luke picking articles or like, you know, events and parables, things that Jesus taught that will reflect those things very clearly. Okay. He was the only Gentile to have written a major chunk in the Bible. There are some statements which were made by Balaam and many others like Nebuchadnezzar and all, which are part of the Bible. But it doesn't mean that they spoke inherently or anything. But Luke's writing is inherent, infallible, authoritative word of God. Okay? It, it can guide you for all matters of faith and practice. He wrote so that people across the globe will understand what happened in Palestine and how their life is impacted by what happened there in Palestine. Okay, For that reason, he wrote. So there are some things which Luke does, which other authors of the gospel don't do. Okay, Because he had a particular purpose. So when you read that, you must also understand those things. He provides names, timelines, okay, official role of that person, etc. Okay, so that you know you can verify history. So today, two thousand years after Christ, when we take the Luke's gospel, we can read it and we can verify the facts. Okay, there's a book that I read as a youth, Who Moved the Stone? Okay, Because for a person in the 
20th and 21st century, it is difficult to understand how a person could have come to life. Okay? Or were all these things mythical to think like that? Okay, so this Frank Morrison also set out to prove that Jesus was not a historical figure. And everything that the Bible is telling is myth. So he started investigating. Large part he wrote one chapter also in that book. Then he wrote another chapter, the book that refused to be written. Because that's where he found himself in. As he looked at the Bible, as he looked at the events that took place, looked at the evidence strongly from the book of Luke, you know, he understood that Jesus is a historical figure. Okay? And there is plenty of proof that you can have 2,000 years later to attest for most of the things that are stated in the book of Luke and Acts and even in the other Gospels. Okay? So you need to understand the major characters you know, some of the official characters whose historical roles are quoted by Luke. Okay? There are two Roman emperors that are mentioned by Luke. They are Caesar Augustus and Caesar Tiberius. Okay, You can write it down if you are writing because these will help you in studying and understanding Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Because time and again, their names are their titles will be referred to. Caesar Augustus was there before Christ and he ruled till 14 AD. So by the time it was 14 AD, Jesus would have been around 20 years old. John would have been around 20 or half past 20 or 21 years old. He was about 6-7 months older than uh, Jesus. So Augustus means the exalted one. You know, we have people telling you no know, non-biological. Okay, so Augustus also thought he was non-biological. Okay, exalted one. He is the emperor who ordered the census, which is quoted in Luke chapter 2. Okay, he ordered a census. Chapter 2, verse 1, Caesar Augustus issued a decree for the whole Roman world. Okay. Joseph and Mary were at that time in Nazareth. They were in the wrong place. Okay. So an emperor was used by God to issue an order to make Joseph and Mary go to Bethlehem. Okay. Now, if you think about it, you should always, when you want to study, now you have one more month to study the book of Luke. Keep an atlas with you. Look at atlases. Okay? See how long they traveled, how high they traveled, and you will know what was their difficulty. Okay? That journey which uh, he undertook was about 150 kilometers. And that's three times going to my workplace and coming back on huh? the So, for just for understanding, or almost from here to Baroda. And they had to climb 2,400 feet. Okay, Bethlehem was at an altitude. So, only when you see the geography of the places, you will understand the struggle that a pregnant Mary and the difficulty they had to undergo when she was late in term to travel to that place. But Augustus was the guy who did it. Okay. He was followed by Caesar Tiberius. Okay. He ruled till 37 AD. Okay. I'll find, finish about all these major historical people so that you get a glimpse of it. Then you can study on your own. Rest we will be doing in our Bible studies on Tuesday. Okay. So Tiberius was the Caesar whose face was on the coin which people bring to Jesus, which only Luke writes about. And Jesus tells, render to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Render to God what belongs to God. Okay, the Caesar Tiberius whose picture would have been there because he was the ruling uh, uh, Caesar at that time. Okay. 
and it is about Tiberius that an accusation is brought against Jesus when he was standing trial before Pontius Pilate. The Jews tell he is instigating people not to give tribute to Caesar. It is this Caesar that is, because some places only Caesar will be mentioned. But it's not the same Caesar as the Caesar of his birth. You must understand. Okay. So the Caesar who was around at the time of the ministry of Jesus Christ was Caesar Tiberius. Okay. So these, wherever you find those things, you should write it down so that, you know, each time you will not get confused. Next, political class that the Bible talks of are Herods. Okay. Luke chapter 1 verse 5. In the time of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest called Zechariah. Okay. So there is a Herod who is mentioned here. This Herod is Herod the Great. Okay. He was the one who rebuilt uh, or remodeled or refashioned the temple that was there in Jerusalem and made it a grand site. Okay. When Zerubbabel and uh, uh, others, Joshua, they built the temple, it was not so grand because they didn't have much resources. But it was Herod the Great who polished it, made it grand, impressive. People came. He actually dismantled the temple, raised platform was built, and then he constructed the temple, reconstructed it on that, on the same model. Okay. So that was Herod the Great. He was an Edomite. So this entire Herod family was Edomites. Okay, they were not Jews, but they were ruling the Israelites. He was the Herod under whose reign Jesus was born. Okay, so in Matthew's gospel, when the Magi come from the east, possibly Iran or Iraq, okay, it is this Herod who is sitting on the throne and who orders the execution of all children who were two years or below. Okay, boys, two years old. So it is Herod the Great. Okay, this Herod is different from the other Herods who are mentioned later on. Okay, so be careful what you are understanding. Otherwise, you will get confused. Now, Herod Martha, then again Herod Atta, you know, all those things you will get confused. His son's name, this Herod died 4 BC approximately. Okay. His son's name was Archelaus. You remember Archelaus? His name is also mentioned in Matthew's Gospel. After, just prior to the killing of the children, Joseph and Mary flee to Egypt. Then they hear Herod is dead. Which Herod? Herod the Great. Okay. And they hear that Archelaus is ruler in his place. And they are afraid. Then God sends them instead of back to Bethlehem, he sends them to Nazareth. Okay. So keep understanding. After the death of Herod the Great, Caesar actually divided the rulership of the Jews into four parts. That is why it is called tetrarchy. It means four divisions. Okay. Archelaus was responsible for Jerusalem, Judea, that region. Okay. There are two other, uh, three other tetrarchs who are mentioned in Luke chapter 3, verse 1. It talks about Pontus Pan. Pilate as governor of Judea, Herod, Tetrarch of Galilee. Okay, Herod, without a name, Tetrarch of Galilee. His brother, Philip, and Lysanias. Okay, these are people who played big roles. Okay, and you need to understand something important about them. Okay, Luke does not mention Archelaus, whom Matthew mentioned. You know why? Because Archelaus was already dead. He died by 14 AD. Okay. 
uh, or rather 780 he died by that time very short reign was there then he died after he died there was no tetrarch for the region of judea the southern part of israel there was no tetrarch it was governor's rule how we have in india no it's like that that is why pilot was ruling this region at the time when jesus was being tried it was not under any herod directly okay about the other three herods you read very little about one of them lysanchus you don't read much about him about philip we know that his wife herodias flirted with another herod that is the third herod whose name is not mentioned his name was antipas okay he was the herod who put john to death at the request of herodias okay he was also the herod who was ruling and who uh, was responsible for the trial that jesus had to withstand okay he was the one before whom jesus appeared okay there are two other herods who are mentioned by paul in the book of acts herod agrippa 1 and agrippa the second okay we won't look at it today but there are there are two there were so this was caesars then herods then governors quirinius is mentioned at the time of jesus's birth his re region was syria that is in north okay and pontius pilate we won't see much more after that okay he was governor of judea there were high priests who are also mentioned in luke chapter 3 verse Who? Who are those high priests? Huh? Annas and Caiaphas. Can there be two high priests? Was Luke wrong? You know, when you read, question should come into your mind. There are many places where they are referred to as high priests. Okay, Annas was the father-in-law. He was the first high priest who was. there from ad 6 to 15 but during the ministry of jesus during the time when jesus's ministry was there and john the baptist ministry was there it was caiaphas who was the high priest okay but annas was alive he had only been deposed okay the government had removed him from his post and placed his son in law you know the one who had married his own daughter okay but they were one team double engine sarkar okay everything they did together okay even when jesus is interrogated or the trial of jesus is there at that time after he is arrested he is brought to the home of annas an illegal gathering takes place in annas so he had no legal standing but the meeting took place in that that is where jesus was beaten by the guards that is where peter uh, denied jesus three times it was in his garden that peter you know uh, during that illegal trial denied jesus okay caiaphas is the one who prophesied that it is better for one man to die than the whole nation perish and the bible luke especially and john they talk quote it john quotes it as something that he did because he was in that office of chief priest and he prophesied because god made him prophesy he was telling literally what god was having jesus do there dying for other people one man dying for people okay he questioned jesus directly okay then later after annas's house when dawn breaks you know because or whatever happened in the night was illegal so early morning as soon as it became dawn they gather in the sanhedrin and caiaphas led that meeting all false testimonies started falling apart because they were not matching then caiaphas took things in his own hand okay he asked jesus directly are you the messiah and jesus said yes 
Okay, and he said, now what else we have to hear? Let all the testimonies like, you know, be wrong or clash or whatever. We heard it from his mouth. Okay, he is claiming to be the Messiah. And they take Jesus to okay. So this Herod also played a big role in, uh, this high priest also played a big role in the death of Jesus Christ. Okay. We will just look at one last thing. What happened to these people? After the Gospels were written. Okay. Or which is not recorded in the Gospels for us. Okay. All of these people died. AD 37 to 39. Soon after the Lord's death. Resurrection. Triumphal ascent. All these famous people. Rich. Powerful. Who had life and death. You know authority. Over people on earth and over Jesus Christ at that time. You know, it looked like that. They all died miserable deaths. It is good for us to know what happens to people who stand in the way of God's plans. Tiberius was murdered, you know, AD 37. He became sick. Doctors declared him dead. They found that he was breathing. When they came again into his room and his own assistant at the behest of the next, you know, who was going to become the emperor, Caligula, he took a pillow and smothered him and killed him. Okay, that's how Tiberius died. Herod Antipas was sentenced to death. Okay, he was recalled to Rome and there he was sentenced to death. Pilate died of suicide. Okay, Annas and Caiaphas, their tomb is there in the same place which they helped purchase with the money that was thrown to Judas. Akaldama. Okay, there is a portion, extension to Akaldama, where some of the rich tombs are there. These people's tomb also shares the same locality with that of Judas. They also had terrible deaths. Judas himself, we know. How he died? Suicide. Okay. So, in our life also, someone told me, no, a, a Christian told once, we all like to be like Caesars. Now, having power in our office, power in our buildings, you know, authority everywhere. And we want to be like Caesar. But today, after so many years, dogs are called Caesar. That's a name given to dogs. You know, Nero, Brutus, Caesar. These are names which are given to dogs. Okay? So history changes with time. Okay, be careful what you are imitating. All the disciples other than Judas, you know, they suffered for Christ. Ten of them were martyred. They died. Okay? But they were martyred for their faith. Okay? One of the things that you can be sure is, nobody will die for what he knows to be a lie. Yeah? Suppose I believe that there is a transparent elephant in this room. Okay? I tell you all. There is a transparent elephant. You can't see it because it's transparent. Okay? But I know it's a false thing. Suppose Rakesh comes with a gun and tells me, no? now tell me the truth. What will I tell? It's such name. Then I'll confess. But if I'm willing to die for what I'm claiming, that means I know that it is real. All those disciples who died showed to us that they believed what they preached. They believed what they wrote. They are reliable and can be accounted. Okay? So, the author Luke left a trail in the gospel account. And the trail can be understood. The trail can be tracked. And you can be sure about your faith. We'll just read that verse and close it. Luke chapter 1. Okay? We saw up to the part where he collected from eyewitnesses and servants of the word 
the information. With this in mind, since I myself carefully investigated everything from the beginning, okay, Luke is telling, I investigated it. Okay, as a doctor, when a patient comes, he investigates what happened behind, you know, what is the real problem? Because everyone comes only with fever and body pain. And I can't eat. So, appetite is gone. Just two, three symptoms. But the problem behind it will be altogether different. Okay, he investigated it from the beginning. I too decided to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may know the certainty of the things you have been taught. Okay, so when you read the book of Luke, when you read the book of Acts, look for the evidence that is given. It is Luke who gives so many proofs of the resurrection of the Lord. You know, he actually captures. Every single person who actually saw the risen Lord Jesus Christ into his account. Okay, because in the book of, so in our life, many times, you know, we might have doubts in our heart. You know, whether what we are reading, what we are believing is the word of God or no. But if you have doubts, what book you can read, which of the four gospels you can read? You should read the gospel of Luke. And you will know with certainty that Jesus was a historical figure that he lived, that he died, and he rose again from the dead, and he ascended to heaven. You will have the proofs when you read the book of Luke and the book of Acts. Okay? We'll end. Request uh, Aaron Gohan to pray. Historically, you was telling everything to prove that the person came in the flesh, he is the son of man, and uh, uh, the, all the evidence that he is giving us is to prove that you are the savior of the Gentiles also. Lord. We thank you for that, Lord. Lord, help us to not let me into that way. So seeing what it was, Lord, but help us to see the Lord and let uh, Isaiah see after the death of Isaiah, God, he saw the glory of God. It was so great. Lord, help us to see that glory, Lord. Help us to see the Christ, an amazing deity and uh, Help us to be friends, naturator in the Lord, because that is going to be the eternal, that is what we are going to do in the eternal lives, so Lord. Help us, Lord, whenever we need for the next month or so for the Bible study in the first. Lord, it is not for the knowledge sake, Lord. Help us to comprehend the Christ God. And help us to enjoy. Uh, help us to rejoice in the Lord, Lord. Jesus name we pray.